Welcome to the Interesting Podcast, episode 21. We've passed 20. We are in the 20s now. This episode is uh, my buddy Daniel, also known as Squeaknado Cosplay, and he is awesome. He, uh, he's, qu- I mean, he's only been in the game for maybe a year and a half or so, almost two years, but he's very quickly become one of my favorite cosplayers I've ever met. Um, his, <laughs> his choices are fantastic. He's done uh, Les Grossman from Tropic Thunder, which I could probably stop right there. That is, th- that is awesome. Um, he's done Sailor Deadpool. He's done a Jedi. He's done a couple things, but uh, he's probably most well known in Florida for his uh, Sailor Freddie Mercury, and we get into that. Yeah, yeah. Let that sink in. Sailor Freddie Mercury. That is, yeah, uh, incredible, incredible. But this episode we talk about um, him working in IT, which is very interesting. Um, how he got a job at a school. We do a huge chunk on D&D because I've never played and I am fascinated. It's something I've always wanted to do. I just haven't got the chance, so I kind of lived vicariously through his stories. Uh, We talk about how he got into cosplay, what inspires his choices, the Northridge Charity Group in New York, a whole ton of stuff. Um, But it's good. Uh, Yeah, here we go. Episode number 21, Squeaknado Cosplay. Theme song. When you talk, just bring it like kind of close. You started Uber driving? How was that? Well, I haven't started yet. I'm. Oh, uh, yeah, I just got to get my inspection next week, and then. Is that what you do? How yeah. does that work? I just took my first Uber last night. Yeah. Uh, I mean, basically, as a driver, it's you know you reach out to Uber. You say you basically tell them you want to be a driver. They then schedule an appointment for you to go and get an inspection on your car to make sure it's up to par and it meets their standards. Oh, okay. And then from there, you know, you, you fill out the paperwork at the inspection. And then once it all gets approved, you then become an Uber driver. And then all you have to do is turn on the app, wait for a fare to ping you. You ping it, huh. pick someone up, and then you start driving them wherever. That's pretty cool. Yeah, I mean, it makes sense. I don't know why I never thought about that, that you would have an inspection. Of course you yeah. would. Of course you would. They just want to make sure that the, the car is going to be 100% safe and all that. Yeah, that makes sense. You know, there's, there's, they have some liability if anything happens. Sure. Um, That's such yeah. a great idea, Uber. Oh, yeah. Like, I mean, the cab company's got to hate it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, when you're talking, because, you know, the last time I had to use an Uber... I was about 50 miles from home. Wow. Cost me about 15 bucks. What? Whereas I called the cab company prior to using Uber, and they were saying about 130. So that's insane. It's, 15 dollars. Yeah. For, what? It's Hell like yeah, it's man. amazing just how different the cost is. For sure. That's awesome, dude. I, I yeah I, I downloaded the app last night. Yeah. I went to a restaurant. and I was like, I don't have a way back to the place. <laughs> so I downloaded the app. And then I did it, and it's like five bucks. I was like, what? Oh, yeah. Yes. Because yeah. I've never been in a cab. Have you? I've never been in a cab before. I've never used a cab myself. Like I've heard that, like, it's time-based. So as long as you're in that car, the meter's running, even if you're not going anywhere. Yeah. That's insane to me. Well, I mean, Uber has kind of their own weird formula to dealing with that. Yeah. But still, the, the rates are extremely low. So, like, you can go, like... A good amount of distance and it's still gonna cost you like oh, yeah, absolutely. next to nothing. But I mean in the sense that like you're not charged more for red lights. Or are you? Uh there there is a time factor, but it's, oh, it's okay. it makes very little difference. It like maybe tax on a few more dollars. Oh okay. You know, it's not anything significant. Gotcha. Cool. Cool. That's awesome. That's awesome. The dude I had was really cool. His name was Steven. Oh yeah, no, like it's all cool the dude. all the Uber drivers I've met so far, you know, they're all 
they're all fun guys. A lot of them are actually in IT, which is hilarious because I'm in IT. Right. How long have you been doing that? IT's fascinated me because it sounds like the worst job ever, but like with hidden perks. Yeah, I mean, it's professionally, I've been working in IT. November will be two years. Okay. So, but prior to that, since I was 10, I was actually, you know, just doing stuff on the side, learning computers and all that. So, sure. I have a lot of just, you know, non-professional experience and now I'm getting that professional experience. That's pretty cool. So, so that's something you've always had an interest in. Oh yeah. That's pretty I mean neat. computers just make sense to me. Sure. I always, I always joke around that uh, you know you know basically basically I joke around saying that I'm basically a robot because ones and zeros make more sense in my mind than you yeah. know actual <laughs> English. Sure. <laughs> it, that's fair. That is fair. That's crazy. So like software, hardware, all of it. Like if it's computer, yeah, you got I it. Yeah, I mean, it's I primarily do a lot of the hardware stuff, but uh, there's there's a bit of software that I deal with. I know they hired me mainly for being a hardware guy since I also have a a small electrical engineering background. Oh, so cool. So that just kind of helps me understand the hardware aspect of devices. Sure. So. And you work at a school. Yeah, I. My I, nephew I, goes to that school. Yes, he does. Such a small world. I know that. <laughs> It was funny because when uh, when your nephew told me that <laughs> that you guys were related, I was just kind of like, "Wait, you're related to Brian?" Right? You look at John; he's a big guy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, that's my nephew. Yeah. It's my sister's son. <laughs> yeah, no, that that was a uh, that was kind of a funny moment. I remember getting a a picture uh, message to me of yes, like on like you Thanksgiving guys or on Christmas. Thanksgiving. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I, I remember I was talking to somebody. I was talking to Harley, actually. I met, yeah. I met him because he's John's friend. And um, I forget which. It, it was one of your costumes. I'm trying, to I'm trying to remember which one it was. He goes, yeah, I got a friend who does this costume. I was like, that's crazy because I know a guy who does that costume. He goes, is his name Daniel? I was like, you know Daniel? He I'm works at our school. I'm trying to think yeah, because, I mean, it could have been a number of things. I, I think at the time... I'm you, trying to think. I, I know, know your stuff is so good and like, it's so precise. Like, what's the word I'm looking for? Yeah, because I think it's so precise. Like, this is it. You yeah, know what because I, mean? I think at the time it's like you know I do my generic Jedi and all that, but I think it was also I was doing Gene Frankel. It, and wa you know, it was uh, Sailor Deadpool. Sailor Deadpool. That's yeah. what it was. That I was like, I don't know any other Sailor Deadpools. <laughs> because I did those two around. Yeah, I, I did Sailor Deadpool right after. You did. So. So I'm, uh, we oh, we will get to that. <laughs> um, so you work at a school, you do IT. What yeah. is the most common problem you fix? <laughs> I, I'm fascinated by this. I, I can't do computer I mean, stuff. Yeah, honestly, the most common problem you face is people locking themselves out of their accounts. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> Forgetting passwords or like doing it wrong a bunch of yeah, times? Yeah, no, it's most... Most errors are usually use, user error. It's yeah, just and ID ten T. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No. I mean, it's like you know, any given week, I'm usually unlocking about thirty, forty people. Good lord. You know, it's just between that or you know, just just simple issues that are solved by just turning the computer off and on again. <laughs> like the biggest joke in IT is, you know, have you tried turning it off and on again? Yeah. It's about 85, 90% effective. That is fantastic. I mean, it's, <laughs> as much as we joke about it, it actually is like one of the first things we try. That's I mean. funny. That's it. So, okay, so they're locked out of their account. Like, say they forgot their password or something. How do you fix that? If you're allowed to say oh, it. If it's a secret. Yeah, no, it's, I mean, it's, all I do is, uh, you know, each campus, they have a, a server that we can remote into where uh, they have an active directory that has all the user accounts. Oh, so okay. whether or not it's somebody at my campus or even at another campus, all I have to do is find them in the state. I just find them you know, in the active directory yeah. under their campus, you know, either by their name or their ID number. Okay. And then you know, it's just simple right click, check to make sure their account is locked and if it is locked I then just hit the unlock button yeah. <laughs> wait for it to synchronize and unlock and then okay there you go. go 
And if there's issues from there, I can just reset their password from there, give them the new password, and then they can take sure. everything from there. So. And you do that a lot. I do that a lot. <laughs> but That's you know crazy. what? I don't complain. It keeps me busy during the day. I hear you. I hear you. So we're going to ask, how did you get the job at a school? That's pretty neat. Was it something you wanted to do or just any IT job? It was, it's actually a, an extremely funny story. Perfect. Okay, so I had just moved to, fl to Cape Coral, Florida. Okay. You know, so, you know, maybe two months before moving, I've been looking for jobs and that. And, you know, one of the jobs that I did apply for was, you know, the IT position at the school. Right. Um, and it was just funny because, you know, it had been a month. So I thought the position was filled. Sure. But because I also have a degree through the school, I can utilize their career service department. Ah. So I went in there one day to talk with career services to see what leads they had on the area because I wanted to do, I know they already have done their footwork in finding leads on jobs. So I figured I'd go get the leads from them and, you know, start applying. Sure. So I go in, I talk with, you know, both of the career service specialists for about an hour or whatnot. And, right. You know, they give me the list. They, you know, they rehash my resume and all that, you know, spruce it up a bit. Sure. And they send me on my way. Literally a half hour after I leave there, I get a phone call from the head of the department. <laughs> and she, you know, I answer the, the phone. She's like, oh, my goodness. I was sitting in a meeting. <laughs> and our director brought up that we're still looking for an IT specialist. Oh, And wow. I totally, it just, it, it, you know, the just, light bulb went on, it. and <laughs> I was like, oh, my goodness, we just had somebody in here that could fill this role. Right. That's so <laughs> she called me immediately. Like, she ran out of the meeting to call me. Like, she didn't wait for the meeting to be over. Sure. Called me, told me the director was going to call me. You know, I get a call from him 10 minutes later. <laughs> set up a, an interview for the next day. I go in, we talk about stuff. He kind of got a feel of what I knew with IT and all that. Right. And then from there, you know, two weeks later, I'm starting my job there. That's awesome. But it was just like the, the funniest fluke because I didn't even ask about the job position right. because I thought it was filled. You assumed filled. it was filled, right? So. Right. That's funny. <laughs> <laughs> and they're like, yeah, we'll help you find a job. You're good. All right, good luck. And you're like, no, no, we need him here. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, so... All right, what is, uh, what's the strangest thing you've done as an IT guy? Or the most difficult job you've, ha you've had to do? Oh. See, people ask me this one all the time. It's always the hardest question to answer because it's, you know, I have my, it's usually the simplest issues which are the hardest because there's some simple issues that even though you do everything right, yeah. just nothing wants to work. Like, Sure. My own personal opinion. There, there's something up with, like, technology and that where it does kind of work against you, yeah. <laughs> even when everything is perfect. Like, actually, right now I'm working on a problem. Now that I think about it, uh, my, my manager's uh, laptop, okay. the VPN software doesn't work on it. Oh. I've reinstalled it. I've made sure that all the all the IP addresses, all the, you know, you know, the, I made sure like it's good with the, the domain and everything for uh, the campus. Sure. Uh, you know, I mean, actually, I, I literally for five hours the one day had four different SSTs uh, from different campuses. We were all in an IM chat trying to figure out the issue with this laptop oh, and we're God. checking the the accounts making sure group memberships are good with the account and everything right uh, and like i'm i'm taking the laptop with me to like different you know locations that have free wi-fi to test because you can't test vpn on the actual campus network you have to right. use a different local so first I was using my phone as a hotspot, sure. and that wasn't working. So I'm driving to Starbucks, McDonald's, everything, <laughs> just driving around the area, just trying to see if I can find one location that it would work with. Sure. But because it wasn't working with anything, we're like, okay, well, that rules that out. So, oh, you know, we're, just, we're going at it. Still haven't figured out the problem, and it's been like <laughs> two weeks. <laughs> oh, God. That is insane. But, 
Well, okay, then we will switch gears to this one. What was your first con? My first con. My first con was Magic City. Really? Back in uh, 2015. Wow. So you're, yeah. you're fairly new to the scene. Yes, I am. Uh, well done. I mean, basically, <laughs> basically, I got into costuming prior because of a charity group I worked with uh, back home in Buffalo. Uh, but then when I moved down here, because, you know, I had nothing to do sure. in my free time, uh, I looked up what the cons in Florida were like. Sure. And I saw the closest one that I could go to was Magic City in Miami. So <laughs> I was looking through it, and I saw Kevin Conroy was going to be there. So I was like, screw it. It's I'm bad going. <laughs> got myself a hotel room booked and, you know, got myself the tickets. You know, went, met Kevin Conroy. It was a good time, and that's where I started running into to people. Like, you know, I met Aaron there. You right. know, he was the first person I met that actually uh, befriended me. Oh, that's awesome. And then I know I ran into you at the time there because right. I think you were doing uh, Oberyn. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, because you were sense. in the costume contest or whatnot as that. Right. So I right. met you there, but it's just a quick, like, hey, how's it going? Yeah, yeah, You know. Absolutely. But, yeah, no, I mean, that was my first con, and then from there it's just been, like, I get out whenever I can. Yeah, I f I'm right there with you. So you're from Buffalo. Yes. Buffalo's uh, nice. It's cold. Yeah. I've been there born once. Born and raised in uh, Buffalo. So you've been to Niagara Falls, right? Yeah, more than enough times that, you know, <laughs> everybody who visits, they love the falls. I'm just like. I've only been I've to the Canadian side. The Canadian side is the best side. That's what I've heard. It's I haven't seen the American side. <laughs> The Canadian side is so much better. We went we went accidentally. <laughs> we, we're like, we're going to go see Niagara Falls. And we're like, we we didn't take the turn we were supposed to, and we ended up in customs. It's like, oh, I guess we're going to Canada. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Right there. But no, it's, uh, yeah, no, Niagara Falls is definitely better on the Canadian side. I know, th I know the only thing I miss really about Buffalo is the food. Yeah. Like, Florida just, the food isn't as good. Yeah, that makes I sense. Mean, it's that makes sense. It's, it's too cold. It's too cold for me right. up there. Uh, well, yeah, no. Western New York, though, is they're they're known for just you. The main things you're gonna do when you go visiting Western New York is eat and drink. Yeah, right. That's what that's what me and everybody I know that lives there is like. It's like the only pe people who visit here are you know the people who want to eat and drink. Right, you right. Know. Hey, that ain't too bad. That ain't too bad. So what what made you move down here? I needed a change of scenery. Sure. Uh, it's understandable. Things were getting stagnant up sure. there. You know, I just, I, I decided to just, you know, up and move. I had a buddy who lived down here, so, cool. you know, moved down here, got a place with him. Cool. And, you know, but yeah, it was just. Yeah, I always wondered that. I was like, why Florida? Because I did the same thing. I'm from North Carolina, and we moved down here because my dad at the time was like, I'm going to retire. And he didn't retire for another, like, <laughs> 17 years. <laughs> yeah. But Florida's a weird place. Yeah, no, it, it was just straight up. You know, the Need opportunity it? was there, so why not? I just, I just said screw it. I told my buddy, hey, I got everything together. I can move by this time. Yeah. And he was like, okay. So him and his dad flew up for the week. Right. And then they they hung out, helped me pack, and all that. Mm -hmm. And then uh, we all drove down. That's awesome. So, that's a good good way to go. Oh yeah. To that's cool. And it was probably better because you know. Me, after a few hours of driving, I'm usually, like, ready to pass out behind the wheel because cars put me to sleep. No, I hear you. <laughs> the The first time I ever drove a long time, uh, I had just gotten, I want to say my permit or so. I was, like, 15 or so. And uh, we were driving up, I forget where, but I barely made it to Tampa. <laughs> <laughs> From Naples, I was like, I am really tired. Yeah. Now I'm good. I got a good, I want to say... Six and a half, maybe seven hours. I yeah, can that's straight. about what I can do. And then as I'm well. like, and I'm then it's really like tired. I gotta, you got to pull off and take that like half hour, hour nap. Yeah, because you're back just to looking it. at a road and it's just straight and it's boring. Oh man. I mean, well, that's why you got to have awesome jams. I know, right? Car karaoke is the best. Absolutely. <laughs> have you uh, have you done any traveling at all? Do you travel? Oh, I actually, uh, you know, normally on the weekends, uh, even though I live in uh, the Cape Coral, Fort Myers area. Sure. Uh, Almost every weekend, I'm in Fort Lauderdale. Oh, uh, really? Because I hang out with Aaron and a couple of other guys that we know. Uh, oh, that's awesome. We play, like, D&D &D and what? Pathfinder and all that stuff. So I'm just like, 
you know, two hour drive to go play D and D. Okay, I'm game. Yeah, you got it going on. Geek cred. Yeah, I just. That's awesome. You know, How is that? I've never played D and D before. Really? I have a romanticized idea about it. It's like it it's sounds like the best thing ever. It's a lot of fun if you have the right group. That makes sense. Uh, if you got a bad DM, forget yeah, about it. Well, I mean, it's you could have a relatively bad DM, but as yeah. long as the people you're playing with overall, you know, it 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 is all how the players interact in that that makes it fun. Sure. Because like you know, you'll have like your guys who get really into character, right. and then you have your guys who do like. You know, stupid stuff that kind of like everybody's like, oh, why would you do that? But, you know, sure. it's still funny in that. Or you have people like me where I get these ideas and everybody just looks at me and it's like, no, <laughs> don't, no. No fireball, no fireball. We need to heal. <laughs> well, it's like uh, my one of my Pathfinder characters that was by far the greatest character I've ever created. <laughs> it's a goblin sorcerer by the name of Zob Muggle. <laughs> Beautiful. He talks in the third person doesn't call people by their real names. He gives everybody nicknames. <laughs> He's the most charismatic goblin ever in existence. Fantastic. And all and unlike normal goblins, all he wants to do is be everybody's friend. <laughs> and if he and if you don't want to be your if you don't want to be his friend, he thinks you're an asshole and he lights you on fire because you know, <laughs> cuz he does uh, not have time for non-friends. <laughs> he, he, nope, he doesn't. And it's just great because the way the party interacts, because everyone else in the party was characters that detest goblins. Yeah. yeah. So it's just the whole time, it's just like everybody's like, why do we have this goblin in our party? <laughs> and it's just and like, and like, then they look at me. <laughs> and then they look at me. It's just like, I'm always trying to be like cute and funny and that as we play. That's funny. But that's awesome. Yeah. And I mean, and, and that's the great thing about those games is if you get an idea of how you want a character to be or. Even even if it's not the most uh, powerful character, as long as you're having fun with the character and you, yeah, for sure, and, and you do quirky stuff, it still makes the game fun. For sure. So and you've got real life camaraderie. Yeah, you know, that's awesome. I, have you ever seen Freaks and Geeks? No, I have not. It's good. It's on Netflix. It's only maybe a season or two. I forget. But in that, there's a D and D scene, and James Franco's character has a dwarf named Carlos. Oh God. <laughs> <laughs> I always, that's one of the things that my brain goes to a deity. I was like, a dwarf named Carlos. Well, I know, like, a lot of the people who do, like, live streams of their D&D &D sessions and all that. Sure. Usually, like, the stuff they do is fantastic. Sure. You know? Like, I don't, I don't follow anyone in particular, but occasionally I'll pop into, like, you know, any sort of stream that's going on, and I'll just watch to see what other people are doing, what kind of characters they make. Sure. How they're developing them, how they act. Is you know. is Pathfinder the same with D and D in the Basically, sense? Basically, Pathfinder is the same as D and D, but uh, some of the rules are different. Okay. Um, and like some of the skill sets, and it takes place in like a different world. Like okay. Each place has its own particular world. Uh huh. Um, that somebody took the time to develop, which. I've tried world building. I'm currently trying to word world build. Yeah. It is a pain because you're just <laughs> sitting there. You're like, you're coming up with names for places and backstories and people. Sure. And it's like halfway through everything. You're just like, nah, I don't like that. And you just scrap <laughs> it and you start from scratch again. And That is insane. It sounds like you you have to be a writer to be like, all right, I'm going to build a story and these are the people in that. And then that's, that's intense. I mean, being a writer does help. I'm but sure. as long as you come come up with good ideas and good characters and that even if you're even if your writing is subpar i feel like you could still do it because a lot of this stuff anyways is going to be ad-libbed as you're playing of because because like there are people who know the books inside and out of right. like all the history and lore of the, the lands creatures and everything and, yeah. but then you have other people who are just like we're just gonna make it up as we go. Yeah, you know, right, if I yeah. get an idea in my head of how I want, you know, to throw something into a campaign, why not? Sure. You know. Uh, what What do you prefer, D and D or Pathfinder? What's your preference? I mean, it's because they're so similar. The The thing is, I can't really say I like one over the other because okay. they all have they do all have their differences. Yeah, yeah. Uh, because whereas D and D, like the recent edition, fifth edition, I like the mechanics, like the actual. How the 
how the skills are handled, how combat's handled with the dice rolls and that. It's just, they simplified it a lot. Oh, cool. So it, it makes it really entertaining. You're not doing a whole lot of number crunching in that. Sure. Um, but then Pathfinder is still, uh, I mean, I love the, the lore and that behind the, the realms in Pathfinder. And then on top of that, you know, the different character sets and the different, uh, the, uh, the words escaping me, the, <laughs> the different classes you can play. Okay. Because I know some of the classes you have in Pathfinder you don't have in D&D. Oh, uh, okay. So, you know, it's, it's, it's cool to have that, like, you know, say I want to play, like, some sort of gunslinger or whatnot in, like, medieval ages. Well, you could do that in Pathfinder. Uh, D&D, the rules are a little different for that. I mean, it's... Sure. I mean, most of the time when I play D&D, &D, if I want to do something to that nature, it's I got to have all these skill sets and I got to be a certain race or I got to do this just so I have the qualities that I can actually develop gunpowder and stuff like that. Because, sure. you know, whereas with sense. Pathfinder, it's just like, oh, yeah, if you go to certain areas, they, they've already done that stuff. So you can just go in, buy a gun, buy, oh, buy your okay. bullets, buy your powder, you're good. So there's a bit more uh, Like, it, it's already, like, and, like, in Pathfinder, I've seen, like, you know, they even get into, like, alien technology and, like, you know, oh, futuristic okay. stuff, so... There's way more creative liberties with uh, yeah, Pathfinder, but I mean, seems, and you can which doesn't make it better, in a sense, no, it's just it's, different. Yeah, and then, like, there's other games out there that I play, like, you know, Star Wars Sagas, sure. a lot of fun. Uh, I recently started getting into the Warhammer series, yeah? like, the Warhammer 40K. Yeah. Number crunching, like, you wouldn't believe, like... <laughs> Oh my goodness! You gotta basically be a mathematician to, oh boy. to with all the number crunching that goes on with that. <laughs> but it's just what you can do. Just because I love that, I love the the entire uh, lore and scenery of Warhammer sure. 40k. So it's like I picked up the book and was like, "Hey, I'm gonna check this out. Maybe I can DM a game as with this." Yeah, yeah. And like I've DM'd a couple of games as it, but it's still it's one of those things where it's just like we're spending like you know, a couple minutes, each person's turn in combat, just crunching numbers to make sure we're doing oh, everything correctly. Man. Is it, is Pathfinder in d and I've heard that, like, your first session is basically just rolling for traits and setting everything up. Usually that's how your first session goes down. You might do a little gameplay, but if you have an experienced group, right. everybody will build their character in advance. So okay. when you first meet, you can just get right into it. Okay. Like the group I game with, you know, somebody, what we do is we're all on Facebook. So if somebody wants to run a game, they'll first message us, met, send out a message through one of the groups we already have created, uh -huh. you know, saying, hey, I'm thinking about wanting to run a game, you know, of, you know, say I want to run a game of Star Wars, you know, Saga. Right. You know, everybody will respond if they're good for it, which normally, you know, anyone wants to do something, we're usually game for it because we don't care as long as we're playing something. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, we give them the okay, then they'll create a separate group for all that stuff where uh, if they okay. have any information they want to post in it, they will otherwise... Yo, it's just there for us to communicate and, yo, post funny memes if we find them. Sure, and, sure. But, uh... That sounds yo, really cool. We do that. And, yeah. Uh, yo, and then because we all have the PDFs, at least, of the, the, the games and whatnot that we want to play, we will just sit there and we'll, we'll just make sure we have the information we need to say, like, yo, what level are we starting at, what certain things are going on, what... What kind of things can't we build into our character? Sure. You know, we get those things sussed out, and then we all we just, you know, before the the weekend, we just all build our characters at home. Gotcha. Bring okay. them in and play. And am I correct to assume that uh, Star Wars Sagas is basically Star Wars D and D? Yeah, I mean, I, it's, I, I, had, I have not heard of that. Yeah, it's a. Uh, Which is embarrassing for me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Basically, it's it's you know Star Wars role playing. It's, okay. And like you can. You do stuff like you can make a trooper, smuggler, yeah. Jedi. You know, uh, a lot of the rules make it so that if you go dark side, uh, you know, you lose your character. If you go so far to the dark side, because you become evil. Right. Uh, but there are ways around that, especially because of 
I know a lot of our games we play, uh, we're usually uh, playing as the Empire. Okay. So we allow, like, Sith and all that. If you want to be it, it's just, you know, don't go overboard with yeah. the evil. Don't just start murdering everybody you yeah. see. Yeah, that makes but sense. It's just like, you know, and, like, it takes everything from, like, you know, the EU and all that. So, like, sure. the last time we played, I actually was a Yuzan Bong shaper. Oh, what? So I'm... Whereas Respect. everybody excels in combat, I'm just sitting there behind the scenes like, oh, we have an issue, like, we need something, you know, created. Okay, I'm going to just start creating my weird, like, fucking Use it biotic, thing. Yeah. you know, <laughs> like the, like, it was funny because uh, my my character always walked around in a uh, mascara or whatever the hell it's called, uh, so it gave me the appearance of being human. Oh, that's cool. So here I am. I'm working with the Empire and that because uh, you develop destinies for your character, and based on the, your destinies, you know, you get certain perks that oh, go okay. along with it. And my destiny was, uh, you know, this is after the Yuuzhan Vong War and everything. Yeah. So I'm trying to. S I'm a part of the the Yuuzhan Vong that wanted to be accepted in the galaxy and not the warring group. Ah, okay. So. I was trying to get myself involved in the Empire to show them that there's, you know, some people that, you know, sure. you know, That's awesome. aren't trying to kill everyone. Yeah. And like the, the thing that was funny was, you know, I'm sitting there, I'm, I'm using all this weird tech and everything because, yeah. you know, I'm still using the Yuuzhan Vong tech even though I'm posing as a human. Sure. And I'm just trying to play it off as, you know, oh yeah, I'm just uh, checking this l weird little I'm thing out. I'm just a scientist who learned all this stuff. I was part of like a deep science division at one point, you know, right. that sort of thing. And, you know, eventually the freaking medical officer, you know, found me out. Yeah. <laughs> but it's like I was doing stuff like, you know, everybody on the ship was poisoned, so I was creating, like, you know, creatures and whatnot that could, you know, deteriorate the, the poison inside people and everything. So I'm going around covering people with stuff, injecting them with stuff. Right. And they're all just in there like, what the hell is this? What is going on? This, Because on top of that, they're just all creeped out because of the type of technology I'm using. And I'm like, well, it works. Yeah, absolutely. And... You know, it's just fun stuff like that. So I was there for, like, behind-the-scenes stuff. But we get into combat, and it's just, like, everybody's doing all these amazing feats. And I'm just like, well, I got this bug I can throw at you and do, like, eight points of damage, and that's about it, which yeah. is, like, nothing. <laughs> sure. <laughs> so the, the other question I had is, how do you know when a campaign is over? When you're just like, and the end? Or is there, like... Usually the DM has something in mind, but sometimes we just play things out until we get bored. I mean, it's... Okay. It all depends on how far the DM wants to go. Gotcha. Okay. Because so I've heard, like, stories of D&D &D games that last for, like, a year and a half. Oh, yeah. And then, like, uh, what, what's the longest game you've ever played? And it, like, not necessarily I mean, consecutive. The, the, the longest game I've that we've played is probably, it's probably been about, like, maybe 10 to 12 sessions. Dude. Because we're always jumping between stuff, especially because sometimes... Uh, Sometimes, you know, somebody will be having some, you know, personal issues in their life and stuff, so they have to bow out. So, sure. So sometimes we're, we're doing a campaign where we want everyone to be a part of it because it's such a good story going on and everybody has their role. And if somebody has to bow out for a little while, right. we, we swap over to something else until everyone's back together and then we'll come back to it. Gotcha. Or say if the DM at the time has to bow out for a while, somebody will pick up DMing a game just to hold us over until they're back. Gotcha. So it's okay. you know, we're always jumping around doing stuff. It, it's it's a lot of fun. So sounds like and, it. And we're not we're not always doing the same stuff week by week. So you know, we're getting those breaks in between doing something else. So it 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 keeps everything entertaining. Sure. Have you ever had a character for a really long time and then lost them? I mean, if we want to get into my early D and D days, yes, we that do. was basically every character I had. Yeah. <laughs> um, because our growing up, the the group of guys who I gamed with, the DM's favorite thing was to always fuck with my character. Yeah. <laughs> Any way, shape, or form, like he would literally set up traps that would insta kill me. 
<laughs> because he knew I would fall into it. Oh no. So like, yo, there there's there's shit going on like, yo. Yo, the one time I'm playing a dwarf. Right. And the DM allows me to get like this helmet that allows me to teleport. Oh no. <laughs> and he was waiting for me to roll a critical failure because basically you roll a crit one I rolled a critical failure with it. He would roll some uh, percentile dice. And based on the percentile dice, you know, I'd get like stuck in a wall oh, and no. die instantly <laughs> because you know oh, I either no. have like you know being inside a you know, a stone wall. I mean, there's no, no, there's no you, room for that. No, <laughs> no, you can't really so, survive so that way. <laughs> it's like he'd do stuff like that, or there'd be something like, okay, I walk into a place and there's a statue there. Right. Well, I go to inspect the statue, and if I, you know, decide to like, if I see something on it and I touch it, well, oh, now I just got a fireball to the face. Sure. <laughs> it's oh, just no. like, it's, it's just like the the DM just. Enjoyed way too much messing with my character in particular. That's so. awful. And did you play in the sense where you had to make a new character every time? Oh, yeah. If your character dies, like in uh, any game, your character dies, you make a new character. That sucks. I've um, heard horror stories of people that like played for like a year and a half, and they had their character, and at the end of a year, it, it died. Yeah. That sounds like the worst thing ever. That actually that happened to my uncle. Did uh, it? Oh, no. When, when he was growing up, he used to play. That's and awesome. And he basically had this character that was invincible. Yeah. He could go into anything and just not die, not take damage. And then finally, there was just that one stroke of bad luck, and he lost his character, and he just gave up on D&D &D <laughs> after that because he just like, you know, oh, I lost man. my character. You know, that's crazy. That is a lot of work to put in and to oh, have yeah. it ripped away from you by dice. I would hate the dice. Well, <laughs> that's the part that I love about the game is because you can play your character as strong and as great as you want. Yeah. But when all is said and done, the dice decide they your rule. fate. They rule, yeah. <laughs> and, like, I mean, I've also had it where it's just, like, the, the one time I rolled, I think, eight consecutive critical failures in a row one Good game. Good Lord. I literally threw out the die. I would have. I was, I was like, I'm done. You did, these are threw broken. It. <laughs> just like, no, I kept all the other dice because my, my damage dice were good. Oh, but right. it was the, the D20 that I rolled for you know, m my skill checks and everything. Right. Because here I am, I'm trying to, I'm trying to you know, do diplomacy checks and intimidate checks and stuff with these guys to try to help the party out because, you know, a lot of my characters that I create, I usually make them with high intimidation and all that because sure. I love to just have that opportunity to every once in a while yell at someone and try to like talk them down that way. Right. But it's like when I try to do when I actually try to do that, it's usually critical failure. Now they're pissed. I try <laughs> stuff again, critical failure. <laughs> so now we're fighting. Now I'm trying to hit him, and it's just failure after failure after failure. Oh, no, yeah, I just wanted to yell at him, and then you're dead. <laughs> <laughs> well, luckily I have I have party members, you know, to back me up. Right there, you go. <laughs> Otherwise, I, yeah, no, I. That's awesome. Do you have Do you have any special die? Like, I know some people get, like, collector's dice. Like, some are made of wood, some are made of metal. Like, do you have anything uh, like that? I have nothing like that. I think the only thing special that I have is uh, just as a gift from uh, the, the one guy in our group. He gave us all miniatures of our characters for what? our Pathfinder game we play with him. So That's awesome. I have a little goblin sorcerer, Zob Moggle. What? And I'm just like, this is great. That's awesome. It's, and it's cool because he's got the, the fire in his hand and everything. Yeah. So, That's so you know. cool. I've always wanted to play, and uh, talking about it, I really, I, oh, I gotta yeah. play that out. That's cool, man. Well, hey, if I can get this world building off the off the ground, right? <laughs> I'll let you know. Sure, if you want to take a little trip up to you know Fort Myers, Cape Coral, right? <laughs> right. That's awesome. So now we're gonna get into cosplay. All right. It's gonna get good. All right. What was your first cosplay? My first cosplay was my Jedi outfit. Yes. And like I said, I. I started with that because of a charity group I, I worked with back in Buffalo uh, awesome. called the North Ridge. 
They're yeah. a great group. Uh, I have one of their patches. Oh, you do? The ATAT one. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, 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 no, like they were they were a great group, lots of fun. Uh, you know, everything from birthday events to any sort of charity event. I mean, I know one of the events I went to, uh, they were the the Buffalo Zoo up there, they were trying to raise money for uh, the the polar bear exhibit so that they could oh, have cool. a proper exhibit for the polar bears. Right. So I went there with everyone, you know, to help raise money and all that. Uh, their biggest event is always now uh, Star Wars Night at uh, the Bison Stadium, which is the minor league baseball team based yeah, out yeah. there. And I know they, it was like two weeks ago, I think it was like the ninth annual. It was either the seventh or ninth annual. I can't remember off the top of my head. But it's just, it's a great time. The Bisons just let the, they, we literally, we would literally spend nine months prepping for this sure and then and we do everything from uh making videos for in between the innings yeah. that build up to the the big dueling scene at the end where yo we'll have like 30 40 people out on the field dueling at night so you just see all the what? lightsabers and everything and then we yo know, while that's going on we have people walking through the crowds in costumes getting pictures you know, just chatting people up, getting donations. That's awesome. Stuff like that. And then, like, you know, the proceeds and everything, you know, we're always, you know, charity-based. So, like, yeah, yeah. we did, like, American Heart Association for sure. a bunch of the years. And just now uh, they kind of switched over to now they're going to start helping out uh, other charities, like, I think this year they did Compass House, which is kind of a charity for uh, helping runaways. Oh, that's awesome. Like teenage runaways and yeah. all that. So, I mean, the great group of guys. That's really cool. They're Sounds also like another another thing I miss from Buffalo is those yeah. guys, you know. Sounds like the Legion. Legions. Yeah, well, and that's the thing. A lot of those guys are part of the 501st and Rebel sure. Legion and all those. I mean. That's awesome. But it's just, it was, that group was their their group away from those groups for not having to be totally in character can just have hear, fun yeah. relax have there's, a good time there's a jedi academy of north florida the same thing yeah same sort of thing that's that's really cool to do good. yeah but i mean that's what that's what started uh i bought i bought the jedi robes off of uh one of the guys in the group because his son no longer needed in that right. and i mean it was like in mint condition because you know it was his son that actually took care of uh his his outfit oh yeah yeah <laughs> so you know he sold it to me and then from there you know i just started wearing it around to whatever events i could and sure you know it was a good time you know For sure had a real fun time with them and then moved down here and started getting into cosplay with that yeah and then and, and then, then what was your next one? Because I know you did you did your Jedi, and then you're like, wait a second, yeah. there's untapped potential here. After that, uh, I think next was uh, Gene Frankel from uh, the SNL More Cowbell sketch, freaking Will Ferrell's character. Which is so fantastic. Yeah, that was a funny story because I was literally sitting in my room working on some stuff. I think I was working on homework for school. Sure. And... Somebody posted something about more cowbell online because I took a break to look at Facebook and that. Sure. So I pull up the the video on YouTube and I'm watching it. And as I'm watching it in my peripheral, I actually had a cowbell. Oh, did and you? it was on my desk. <laughs> and I'm like looking at that with my peripheral. And then I just get like that stupid look of like the stars aligned <laughs> just like why have i not thought of this right and two hundred dollars later that <laughs> night i had ordered everything that's fantastic because like i just i put down my schoolwork i started researching everything sure got everything from you know the glasses the, the wig, wig the glasses beard shirt new pants you know Shoes right. and everything. I was just like, and some drumsticks. Handled. Like, this is. That's awesome. Yeah. That's funny that you didn't like. You basically <laughs> didn't even come up with the idea. The universe like gave it to you. Well, and <laughs> you're that's, like, that's, that's awesome. That's actually how oh a lot my of God. my cosplays are. Really. It's just. 
it's just that stupid moment of just like... Just a freak little braid is like this. That's yeah, really cool. Like, because after that, uh, I did Sailor Deadpool. Right. And that was because I saw some fan art online. Yeah, that's a good idea. <laughs> I, and it was funny because I saw it online and I was first like, okay, it is Deadpool. Yeah. So I went online and I was researching how many people actually do that. I do the exact same thing. And, you know, there's there's a decent amount of people who do do it. Yeah. But it's they're usually not all congested in, to one con. They're usually so spaced out. So I was like, you know what? I haven't seen this yet down here in Florida. Sure. Screw it. And so I started with that, and then I actually evolved it because of the because of the Deadpool movie, where I actually went out and I got a pair of blue Crocs. Because, <laughs> you know, got to have my masturbation shoes. I was masturbation shoes. shoes. <laughs> and then I also got the pony, or the, the unicorn. Yeah, yeah. And so, I, so it's like I got all that stuff. Uh, I know I debuted that at... Uh, it was mega, wasn't it? No, I debuted that at Magic City this year. Oh, okay, yeah. And then Geek Fest is when I added on the the unicorn and the the Crocs. Right. But like, you know, it's it was funny, you know. Yeah, I, absolutely. I actually it was funny because I was apprehensive because of the Sailor Moon outfit. Yeah. Because I'm just like, I don't know how I'm going to feel about wearing a skirt and all that. Yeah, yeah. But once I got it and put it on, I was like, oh, my goodness. Between, like, the Deadpool suit and the skirt, I'm, like, I'm sitting there jumping around like, I like this. <laughs> <laughs> I I've like, learned a oh. lot about myself in the last 20 minutes. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Like, looking at how I am now compared to how I was before I started cosplaying. Sure. Like, I don't know what the hell happened. <laughs> cosplay happened. Because it's just like all the things I want to do now cosplay-wise, I mean, are just like... <laughs> Bonkers. <laughs> like, I never realized I loved Sailor Moon this much until I started <laughs> cosplay. And that was like... Because I did like Sailor Moon beforehand. Yeah, yeah. But once I started cosplay, I was like, oh my goodness, I think I've developed the worst addiction. <laughs> <laughs> I am Usagi Deadpool. <laughs> yeah. Because I think after that... After I did Sailor Deadpool, then came Les Grossman. Yeah, which is my personal favorite of yours. Yeah. That one was, uh, that one, that I, one, is, I, I that one is perfect. I literally was watching Tropic Thunder. <laughs> and when his scene came on, I was just looking at it. I was just like, there's another one. It is. Like, why, why haven't I thought of Dude, doing this? It was so, per it's my favorite thing you've ever done. Your yeah. stuff is really good. I love how original it is, and it's so different, and I well, respect I, and, different so much. And that's the thing. It's I try to do stuff that not everyone's doing. That's Same. Like, that's, my, that's my big thing because, you know, there's, there's a thousand Batmans, a thousand Harleys, a thousand Jokers, yep. you know. All, all, the, all the superheroes and stuff are usually being done a lot. So I just try to find these, these weird off the wall characters if I can. Sure. You know, just because like Les Grossman was perfect because it's just like, okay, you know what? I just got to build a fat suit, get yeah. some oversized clothing, you know, yeah. get, the, get the earpiece, gold chain. Yep. You know, shaved my beard down to stubble. <laughs> went, went full on, shaved, shaved the, the top bald, of your head. Yep, shaved the, <laughs> the receding hairline and everything. Like, <laughs> the amount of people walking by me at uh, Magic City when I brought that out, like, them walking by, they're like, wow, that is dedication. It is. <laughs> it was awesome. It's, dude, I, I'm the same way. I try to do things I haven't seen before. If I get an idea, I Google it. I'm like, has it been done? Like yeah. the Cabbage Merchant, when I was like, I had just recently saw Avatar. And I was like, I want to do something Avatar, but you know it would be funny? The Cabbage Guy. Because only Avatar oh, fans will get it. I, you know? And... Uh, I remember Googling. I was like, hasn't been done before. And w one other guy had done it in, like, San Diego. I was like, oh, sweet. And uh, so I did it. And there's yeah. another cabbage merchant in uh, Virginia. And we're actually good friends now from the Internet. Yeah. And well, no, uh, I know. I know what the cabbage merchant. I mean, that's that's probably the most memorable one. For sure. Uh, e especially easily. because, you know, I know, uh, I know when we started, like, talk like legitimately talking with each other yeah, and yeah. became friends and that was uh that yeah. geek fest that you were uh yeah yeah that you were I had uh, a, booth. a guest at 
and I remember <laughs> coming up and just like he had the 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 felt cabbages and yeah, everything, and, and I was just like, screw it, I'll buy one. It's like, oh look, smiley face, I wouldn't. Right. Yeah. Funny thing is that cabbage still sitting on my office desk. Yes. And he it's lives. funny because people walk in, they're like, why the hell do you have a felt cabbage on your desk? And I'm just like, why would I not have a felt <laughs> cabbage on my desk? That's right. Why don't you have one on your desk? That's awesome. That's yeah. awesome. No, I, I dig it, man. That Les Grossman is so perfect. Yeah. It is so perfect. It's, it's definitely one of those ones uh, I don't do often. It's a just lot. Just because... It's I I have to be in the mentality like that I want to be an asshole to everyone. Yeah. <laughs> and I also have to have the urge to shave that bald spot in my head. Yeah. Because I will not wear a bald cap for that. I don't blame you. It's I don't blame you. And it, that takes preparation because you got to grow your hair out as well on the sides. Well, I and mean, then my hair grows pretty fast, so I don't really have to prepare for that. It's it's just because when I do that, once I shave my head like that, I got to do it the night before. Yo, oh, right. I go to the con, and then my hair's like that the rest of the con, and then when I get home, I gotta shave the rest of my head. So it's like, sure, you know, I got the the the, the processes I gotta go through before and after. It's a bit. So it's a bit. And usually, like everybody's tired after a con, so the last thing you wanna do is sit there and like <laughs> no, no. have to give yourself a <laughs> impromptu haircut. For real, do you, when you shave your head, do you use a razor? Or do you use like a uh, trimmer? I or? first use the clippers yeah. to to get it. At, as short as possible, and then I get the razor out. Razor and I, it up. I go from there. Yeah. And it's it's real fun trying to do that myself because, like, I'm sitting there with, like, a mirror trying to see the top of my head <laughs> so that it's an ordeal. I'm not, like, shaving too far. And You're not cutting into your ear. Yeah. <laughs> yeah and, but and, then, and then... And then we found out you look like Freddie Mercury. And then we found out... Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, Megacon. Uh, Megacon. I wanted to do. Uh, I wanted to do a new cosplay that was cost-effective and everything. Yep. So, I went into my, I went into all my saved photos of possible ideas. Yeah. And I'm going yeah. through, and I totally forgot that <laughs> I had saved a picture, of fan art of Sailor Freddie Mercury. <laughs> and when I saw that, I was like, I got to do it. Done got to do it so I went out uh, well actually I didn't go oh yeah I went out to Joann's got some got some fabric and everything uh, so that I could build the the collar and the bows yeah and then I ordered some t-shirts online hemmed up the sleeves uh, made the collar attached it made the bows attached it sweet uh, and then I wanted to put my own spin on it because all the, the Sailor Freddie Mercury's that I've seen online, there's like all but two of them. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, they made it more Sailor Mercury than Freddie Mercury. Oh, so okay. I went the opposite route. I got the white pants and belt and shoes. Yeah, yeah. Because I wanted it to be more Freddie Mercury overall because it's just, you know, Freddie Mercury's a legend. He's Freddie Mercury, and, yeah. And, you know, you, you got to honor him. Absolutely. Overall. So. Did that, bought myself a microphone stand and microphone. Yeah. Because, you know, once again, his signature thing is the bottomless mic stand. That's right. You know, so, you know, did that, threw everything together, gelled the hell out of my hair. <laughs> and, you know, it was, it was there. Once I got to the con, it's just like, you know, and actually, the thing I loved about that outfit was it was the... It's the first time I've ever been to a con where people were actually looking for me at the con. Yes. Like, I was having people yelling at me from halfway across the hall. Yeah. You know, oh, my God, Freddie Mercury, stay right there. And they, like, <laughs> dart through, pushing through the crowd to get to me. Yes. They're like, I saw your picture on Instagram. I needed to find you. Dude. And, like, so I'm just sitting there the whole time, like, Wow, I was not expecting this kind of outcome. Yeah. But it's like people loved it because I was literally a big walking pun. Yeah. So it's just like, okay, I guess with that. And then it's like, I know I did a photo shoot with uh, MIG Photography. Yeah. You know. Makes the best. And that was funny because, like, I go up there and he sees me. He's just like, 
I know exactly what we're doing. <laughs> Sets up the lights to look like stage lighting and everything. And so, like, I'm doing all my stances. He's literally sitting on the ground trying to get, like, good angled shots. To look like you're on stage. Yeah. That's so awesome. To make awesome. it look like on stage. And, I mean, those those pictures. Are amazing. You know, he does ama an amazing job. Nick like, is the best. Oh, yeah. He takes like, all my pictures. Yeah, I know. I I mean, the reason why I started using him is because I saw the, you know, the pictures you've done with him, and I was just like, those are some really good pictures, you oh, know. Yeah. So I got with Mig. I think my my first my first ones with him was uh, I want to say Sailor Deadpool. I know you. Oh did no, shoot I did my Jedi, Jedi first yeah. with him. Yeah, I did my Jedi at SuperCon. Yep. Uh, two in 2015. And then from there, because of how well those came out, because it was just like the shadowing and the lighting, I yeah. just, I loved it. Uh, from there, I did uh, Sailor Deadpool and uh, Les Grossman. Right. I Which did those in the same weekend. Les Grossman pick he took of you is amazing. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, I'm sitting there, I'm just like, I got to try to look as much of an asshole as I can. Exactly. <laughs> and then... Uh, yeah, and then from that, it's like I did Sailor Freddy Mercury, and I got with him, and like, first thing he said, he's like, "Oh my God, you look like him." You do. You really like, do. Well, and like that's the thing. It's like, I think I found a niche. Like you did. I'm just, I'm just sitting here like, screw it. Like right now. Embrace it, know, man. Right now, I'm just doing casual Freddy. With, yeah. You know my Flash <laughs> T-shirt. Right now, you are Freddy Mercury. Yeah. And it's fantastic. You know, it's I already. I already know where I'm gonna get the the Wembley outfit, you know, the yellow yes. jacket, and all you that. You do that, you know. Yeah, it's, champion fist in the yeah, air. Yeah, I already know where I'm getting that from. I just need the money. Uh, I'm getting that one made made for me. Uh, and then I like my next idea with him. Uh, Is this know. an exclusive? Oh. Are, you, are you about to drop something? Oh yeah, I mean, my next one that I'm doing with him. Uh, I can never remember the concert. Uh, but it's basically take take that yellow jacket, but yeah. make it white with red buckles. Yeah. And add a really awesome white sparkling cape behind yes. it. And I'm just like, Dude. I want that because I've always wanted to cosplay with a cape. Yes. And it's Freddie Mercury, so it's just Dude, like, that might is, as well. That is the greatest niche to have. Yeah. Because that's the thing is, like, I'm, I'm really into details. Yeah. Uh, not in the sense of, like, if you don't have the details, that's fine. But if you have the details, I will lose it. Like, uh, <laughs> if somebody shows up dressed as Owen from Jurassic World, right? Yeah. Awesome. But if you've got the clicker, I'm like, oh, my God. Oh, my God. You have the, like, it's that extra thought. Yeah. Like an actual wooden cart. You know what I mean? For oh, a yeah. Version. No, like, that's... And, and it works, like, that you look like him. Like, I've seen Thor cosplayers that are great. But Ryan Fry looks like Chris Hemsworth. Yeah. So when he dresses up at Thor, it's like, oh, my God, you know? Yeah. And Freddie Mercury, that is the yeah, best no, thing like to look that, like. <laughs> that was unexpected, like, because I've never seen myself with a mustache. Right. Up until I did Sailor Freddie Mercury. Sure. So I thought I was just going to look doofy as hell. Right. And, like, on top of that, it's like I went out, I got my hair cut a little short, but long enough that I could slick it back and all that so I tried to slick it back like he does when uh, his hair is a little longer than normal yeah and it's like I, w I wasn't expecting people to be like you look like him and then now it's like I sit there and you know because what I do is to get myself pumped up now for cons to being as him I, I sit down and I watch like yeah. his live performances and whatnot yes and so I'm just sitting there. It's just some of the angles. I'm just like, holy shit! I can see how people, you yeah, know, you do, you do look like. Because it's like it, it's definitely like the side angle is definitely where it's at. I mean, the only issue is it's, I got to get some like false teeth to give myself the overbite. Yeah. Because like that's the only thing. It's like you know the thing I'm missing is the fucking overbite. All right, <laughs> right. No, it's great. But I dig it, man. I love that. I love different. I love new oh, yeah. and. Dude, you look like Freddie Mercury. <laughs> That's yeah. so cool. Well, I mean, the good thing is I really like Freddie Mercury. Exactly. I love Queen. Exactly. You, know, you need to get a. You need to get like one of those Bluetooth speakers. Yeah. And, like play Queen. It's. I'm planning on doing that. It's just 
I was actually going to do that for this con. The only issue is I ran into some financial issues because of my car. Sure. So I know that feeling. I'm kind of like I'm I'm pressed for cash. So I was that like, you know sense. what? I'm not going to buy the the Bluetooth speaker now. But you it's time. coming. You know what you, you know what you should do? Do the runway contest. You know where it's all about being in character and stuff. And you should do like have them play some Queen and go up there and lip sync it real quick with your mic stand. Walk off. Yeah. That'd be well, and great. like the 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 other thing is it's like I. I am trying to get into the character. Like, yeah, absolutely. It's like, you know, I'll be sitting at home, like, you know, practicing my showmanship and that, like, how he does on stage. Because he always has, like, these, he he has these, like, really weird but easy walks that he does. Like, yeah, when yeah. he's strutting and that. And then, like, sometimes he's, like, you know, kind of, like, skipping around or. The man was you know. fabulous. Oh, yeah, dude. <laughs> the, the guy was fabulous beyond belief, but it's amazing. <laughs> you know. He was next level. Yeah, like, I mean, it's, it's just one of those things where it's like, I sit there, it's like, if you were somebody who said you didn't like Freddie Mercury, I would think something is wrong with you because he's just, he's the most amazing human being. And I'm right. so sad <laughs> I've never gotten to see him because I was born too late. I know. Right? <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, if, if he were alive and they were playing right now, I'd be at as many concerts as I could. Absolutely. It's like, you know, the the dude's amazing. Absolutely. And I mean, just the talent between him and the rest of the band is just... They're queen. I mean, come on. I, come I know. On. I mean, it's... I mean, Bohemian Rhapsody alone, like, come on. Oh, yeah. It's I insane. Mean, it's like one of the <laughs> best written songs ever. <laughs> That's one of those songs that it's like, I will... I will attempt to sing, <laughs> but it's going to sound horrible. Oh yeah, because I cannot sing that high. I, I can't sing at all, <laughs> so I feel you. I, I my voice is offensive yeah. when I try to make music out of it. <laughs> well, with me, I'm pretty good at car karaoke, and that's about it. <laughs> there you go. So you've got you've got uh, more Freddie Mercury on the way. Yeah, it's uh that's like I got I got two outfits. I know for sure I'm going to be doing everything I possibly can to make them. Awesome. After that, I'm. Like I'm straight up just, I got I got pictures now that I've researched of all of his different outfits. Yeah. And I just plan to go to town. Like, you really should. It you know it might take me a year or two just to figure out how to make it, but sure. at some point you probably will see me coming through here in a, a fucking leotard. That is fantastic. Just like you know, just fucking v-neck down to down <laughs> to my stomach <laughs> that's it. down to the bits <laughs> that is awesome but that is awesome well we actually are about an hour can you believe that wow it goes by so fast yeah it does so but hey good conversation absolutely so in that case where can people find you online uh well i'm on facebook as a uh, squeak nato cosplay okay uh, I can also be found on Instagram uh, as SqueakNado. Actually, I think I might actually be SqueakNado Cosplay on there, but I'm at SqueakNado on there. Uh, if you just type that in, I should pop right up. Cool. Uh, because luckily, my nickname is also nobody uses it. Sure. It's That works. You know, it worked out being original, so I was like, okay. No, I, because I'm Jedi Brian on everything. Yeah. Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Like, if there's a new social media platform, I'll sign up for it just to get my name. Oh, that's like. what I've done. Like, yep. I'm on Twitter. <laughs> I've don't. Like, I'm on Twitter as SqueakNado. Uh, I'm trying to get more into it. Uh, I know when I go to a con, I post what I am as you know on there, so that you know yeah. multiple ways for people to see me and all that. Sure. Um, but I mean, other than that, those are like my three big things that I use. Uh, all other social media. I hardly ever touch, so yeah. I mean, I I very, I have the names on there, but I don't I don't have the presence yet because it's just like I either don't I don't have the energy to right to to do more. Sure, well that's awesome, cool man. Thank you for talking to me. Oh yeah, and no, I guess it was a long time coming. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> tell me Scheduling. about it. But hey, you know yeah. what? Waited long enough, so I had a couple of more good things coming along. That's right. We just had we had to build up some stories. Yeah. If we would have done it originally, you wouldn't have been Freddie Mercury. Yeah. You know. That's 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 definitely true. Actually, if we had done it the the times that we originally talked about it, I wouldn't have even been Sailor Deadpool or Les Grossman. You're right. See, <laughs> see, I know what so I'm doing. I've done quite a bit since uh, we last discussed. I'm just gonna pretend to take credit for it. But I I knew the whole time. <laughs> you know. <laughs> that's just horrible scheduling on my part. 
Yeah, well, it happens, and, yeah. you know, it, it's no big deal. Exactly, and we got to talk, and it was great. Yeah. And that is it. Bye. Bye.